This week on Lemons Car Spotting. Hey, it is Eric. It is Nick. It is Lemons Car Spotting. It is your stupid pictures that we talk about. Let's get started. Indeed. Oh, man. This is uh, it's a Dodge Colt wagon. This is one of those Mitsubishis that was sold here as a Dodge late 70s, early 80s. This is one of those cars. I don't know that it was ever super popular. In fact, I can with some confidence say <laughs> that it was absolutely not. But it was also one of those cars that I used to see around as a kid in the 80s. And it was like, hey, that's a normal car. And then one day they were all gone. But uh, yeah, it's um, so it's a Colt that by this point had gotten kind of big, like the earlier ones in the 70s are, are, you know, a more sporty size. It had become more of a regular midsize family car of the time. And then, of course, there was a wagon version because that's what you did back then. And uh, that's pretty neat. And because it was a Mitsubishi, it probably was not good. And that's why they're all gone. Yeah, uh, the wheels look exactly like the ones they put on the Dodge Challenger at the time. Yeah. Like 1980. Um, I would guess it is basically mechanically identical to that car, uh, which was sold as a coupe, of course. Uh, but yeah, uh, 2.6 liter Astron, oh. half a Hemi oh, with man. 99 horsepower or something stupid like that. I love the trim falling off this thing, by the <laughs> way, and the moss and the rust hole. Uh, it's kind of got it all. Uh, I, I, behind it, I think, is a, like a 95-ish Civic hatch. Am I seeing that right? Uh, oh, oh yeah, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, a, it, what do they call that? The EG Civic. I think I'm really bad at the chassis yeah. codes on those. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to dwell on this car for too long, <laughs> but yeah. uh, I'm just noticing in the comments somebody named Robert D C B F L. I sold lots of these in Orlando before the age of the minivan, 2.6 with an automatic. Blah, blah, blah. They, Chrysler never promoted these. That's the classic American car excuse for why four people walked in and bought them because of bad yeah. marketing. It's not that they don't have bad marketing, but I also don't think that's the primary reason for the uh, lack of success of some of the cars that are referenced in that. Ahem, uh, Pontiac G8. Uh, anywho, uh, he goes on to say when the K car was introduced, they discontinued importing it because the margin was less than the K car. That makes sense. Plus, the minivan was K car based. They had the K car wagon, so on and so yep. forth. Um, but it's a uh, God as rare as this is. Imagine to have somebody who like sold these as a car salesman. That's yep. that's pretty impressive. Oh man, <laughs> uh, the classic. Uh, 13th owner Mercedes right here. Um, <laughs> I, I love this. This is uh, in Madrid. Yeah, as you do. Um, uh, the GD Yo Man, Johan Samantha, spotting this one. Uh, you know, in theory, there's nothing wrong with this uh, car aside from the fact that they've put duct tape over every edge of the body, I guess. Yeah, uh, it's, it's of course a Mercedes SLK 230 compressor, or <laughs> might be a smaller engine since it's in continental Europe. But uh, kind of a neat car, and kind of a complete train wreck. And this one looks to be much more of the latter than the former. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just not only is this in Madrid, but it's in La Ciudad Mas Bonita, <laughs> yeah. which um. Yeah, sure. This is apt for that. Why not? Um, um, quality parking job while we're at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, man. It's a matador. We have seen at least one of these on Lemon's Car Spotting. Because uh, just look at the styling. My God. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one has the brown on brown on brown with tan and uh it's just an incredible thing one of these amcs famously has a brown a wood grain gauge face like so you're looking at the speedometer the backing is wood grain and i, I mean it's got to be this car if it's not this car then what is it that has that but uh boy amc is just doing weird stuff like we, we've said this a lot of times mopar and AMC 
50s, 60s, 70s was doing the weirdest stuff and probably selling the fewest amount of cars as a result. But uh, looking back on it, boy, they were, I mean, this is way more interesting than whatever, you know, Ford coupe that you could get at the time. Um, I mean, it's not, not fugly, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's got presence. Yeah, there's, I mean, I, I got to jump on a couple of things. First of all, we were just in Madrid and this is a Barcelona trip. Uh, so <laughs> we're getting the tour, <laughs> tour de España here. Um, second of all, it is brown over brown over brown over brown over brown. Uh, there are, there is brown color keyed wheel inserts and no doubt the interior is brown with the brown opera window top amazing that is the this is the most brown that's ever happened um obviously the headlights are awful these cars actually look kind of okay in profile or from like rear three quarter but then you see <laughs> the nose uh and it's, it's horrifying uh and then the last thing i need to point out is the license plate uh for the frank sinatra fan that owns this says my way <laughs> <laughs> oh man indeed it does oh, uh, you know i'm looking at the comments and it said that the barcelona trim package was 799 dollars. that's a lot for 1977 yep. Yep. and uh it was dis- it was created to compete with the Cordoba and the Monte Carlo. I'd love. Oh man, this is like AMC boardroom theater. Like, hey man, they're they're naming cars after Spanish things like Cordoba and Monte Carlo. <laughs> Look up on the dictionary what is Spanish. <laughs> you know, not we need a place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're over there in Spain. You know, Monte Carlo. <laughs> all right uh, moving on uh what, what? In god's name is happening here uh is that a monte carlo is that a cadillac oh, i think it's a cadillac uh, i think no it's like an oldsmobile or something god i have no idea um well it's hard to tell because it's been jankified uh i don't really know what the right phrasing for this is the lighting on my monitor is not the best, so I can hardly tell which of the two wheels in the back is the real one. It is the one that is more forward, I think, which means the car is a lot smaller than, um, well, no, that's not true. It has 19 feet of overhang that has been body. I God, this thing's breaking my brain. It looks like a perspective problem. Um, I... The fins are post, added, added post with the weird wheel not quite a continental kit i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this is not a purely aesthetic update that's been done it almost looks functional like for some reason that extra set of wheels can be lowered for some reason like i'm Mm. picturing like you know it's got big off-road tractor tires and it's for like going up a very specific driveway you got to put it in driveway mode to get up the (laughs) hill and and it's really well executed obviously it's got the 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 fender bulges to accommodate the extra set of wheels um but it looks like that it has a very purposeful look to it but i just cannot imagine what the purpose is yeah that well said. Better than far better than I can explain what Tell my us eyes are in doing. the comments why this was done. I mean, it's probably I'm... a movie prop if we're going to be honest, but um, I don't know what that would be either. Well, there you go. A mystery. Ah, staying in the Malays era American category, we've got a Buick Limited. Uh, <laughs> what does it say? Uh, I'm reading off of the grill, but now I'm going to cheat and read the uh, caption. 70s Buick Electra. Yeah, of course. Um, well, this is from the era of sort of, you know, fuel crisis. We know it's happening, but we also don't know how to do anything other than a gigantic <laughs> car with a 455. So here it is. Um, yeah, these are... I mean, these were ubiquitous for a time. I didn't see, (laughs) this is the kind of car that I picture as being like just the average working class family's family car. 
right in the 80s and 70s but more so in the midwest than uh, than where i am it's just yeah our streets are just too narrow for stuff like this it becomes impractical very quickly so yeah. um yeah uh it, it's it's a it's an extinct type of vehicle um maybe for good reason but it's always good to see one on the street yeah uh, my family had several gmb body wagons uh of which this I think is an early one. Um, there it is. Yep. Here you go. Oh man. The Look. finest car built in Athens, Ohio, the uh, King Midget. Uh, King Midget. Yeah, yep. Uh, <laughs> fiberglass body. I had like a nine horsepower go-kart motor. Basically it was somehow legal to drive on the roads. Um, uh, man, just, you think about death traps like a crossley, and that seems like a really well built thing by comparison to this. Um, man, we were at the National Corvette Museum place, uh, this year, yeah. and the King Midget uh, National Gathering was in Bowling Green, <laughs> oh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, at the same time. Had we known, I mean, that could have been one of the the great lemons collaborations of all time is to have a few dozen King midgets show up at a 24 hours of lemons race. It would be worth it to own a King midget to just be able to fill it in on things like when you check into a motel and you have to fill out the little form, what kind of car do you have? But King midget or like, <laughs> You know, a, a valet parking. Which one is yours? It's the King Midget. <laughs> like, just for stuff like that. It would be so great. Like, yeah. you know, I, 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 you, they probably wouldn't let you do this, but, like, I'm an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> Look for Nick in the King Midget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, that's the last car for the week. I've got the hoopdiest. Um, looking at my list, really bad Mercedes, um, blah, blah, blah. I'm leaving it right here on the King Midget. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's more hoopty than, than something that's using the equivalent of Harbor Freight hand dolly wheels? This, this has all of the trappings of some guy, some beat the system type dude who figured out a way to make a street legal car that solved some very specific problem he was having and nobody else and, and figured that he would take over the world with it. Um, but Hey, you know, enough people bought them and enough of them ex exist to where there was a gathering of them in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So um, yeah, it, it's hoopty, but, uh, but in a good way, I'd say. Yeah, my favorite thing about this is it's obviously meant to be like an attempt at a city car, you know, like top speed, maybe 40 miles an hour. And that feels like 300 miles an hour in a Camry. Um, uh, but Athens, Ohio, not exactly a major metropolitan area. So <laughs> <laughs> you would think if you had an idea like this, you would try to sell it in Cleveland or Columbus. But <laughs> Athens, not so much. Um <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's some one of the comments is from Southern Ohio Backroads Cars who said, I live 25 minutes from where they built them and it's a long way from home. So we're all talking about Ohio here. <laughs> and so yeah. he's just making the point elsewhere in Ohio is too far for this thing to have traveled. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere is far from home. In a <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, now, it is unfortunately, obviously, too death trappy to race even in lemons. Oh, yeah. uh, we have minimum wheelbase. <laughs> it and, sure is many other things but uh you know as you pointed out we've had a matador coupe in lemons um always would love to see more but that one's way too nice obviously it's a barcelona um we've had slks we've had b body wagons what i don't think we've had is a really ratchet late 1970s dodge colt wagon and i think that is perfect for lemons look at that thing just imagine that going around uh, Thunder Hill at, you know, speeds approaching 64 miles per hour. <laughs> well, I was going to say, this is exactly the kind of car that, you know, if you were to show up with an Evo motor in it and it looked sort of just like the same that it looks like now, that's the kind of thing that somehow the Lemons judges just fail to notice. Uh, you know, it's, it could be a loophole. 
Yeah, well, everybody knows we're really concerned about Evo Motors running away with an endurance race. So, um, you know, what, what are you going to do? Uh, I think that's going to do it for <laughs> Lemons Car Spotting. Bring your Dodge Colt wagon to uh, the 24 Hours of Lemons, and we will see you next week talking about more crappy cars. I think you're totally right about the Challenger wheels being used on this, which, of course, was what? A Mitsubishi Sapporo? Uh, yeah, Lancer, Plymouth Sapporo, Dodge Challenger, all fine machines. <laughs>